Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to mix some mud. We're going to mix up some mud. And there's there's little, there's some tricks to mixing the mud as well, right, Tom? What's that? There's some tricks to mixing up your mud. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, you definitely want some wet mud uh, when you're taping. First coat. I think we showed, think we showed you this in the video before. The wetter, the better. If you get used to working with wet mud. And again, we're using the purple lid, which is the mid-weight. Yep, to get these lids off, a lot of people slit these things here, but that's the wrong way. You're supposed to cut the tab and pull this bottom lid off the whole way. All right, now you know how to open a bucket. And there's our mud, our four and a half gallons worth of mid-weight. Now, right now, this stuff is just way, way too thick. I mean, it's... Way too thick. When after Tom mixes it, it won't be sticking on my finger like that anymore. All right, that's how it comes out of the bucket uh, when you pop the lid off. That's not the consistency that you want to be putting it on. Uh, now today we're going to be taping uh, all of our joints and we're going to be coating our metal. And we don't want that real thick, thick mud. All right. And actually, you never want your mud to be that thick, no matter what phase of the drywall finishing. Yeah, you always wet your mud. Absolutely. Yeah, your mud's always wet. Yep. Uh -huh. So we're going to take clean water. You don't want to use dirty water. We've got a five-gallon bucket of water on standby uh, for two reasons. One, to uh, add water to our mud, which yeah. is just putting it in his mud bag. About, I don't know if you can see how much I'm putting in there, but it's a, it's about a good tall water glass full, if not more. And then I can only, I'll take a look at it and I can just whip the top half of it. Now, the, the, the tool we're going to be using for this is going to be a, a high speed drill. And that's a, that's a heavy duty drill, by the way. To turn this paddle in a five gallon bucket of this pace, uh, you, you need something powerful. That's also uh, the squirrel cage mixing paddle he's using. Good getting that, so you should just take your time and you get to. Yep, take your time. You definitely, definitely want a variable speed drill to do this so that you can speed it up and slow it down. You, know, you can see how creamy that is. Now look at it, look at it on his paddle there. You can see it's a real whipped up, creamy, yeah. almost like a whipped cream consistency, like a cool whip. Um, now when I put some on my finger, you can see that it's, it's almost running off my finger, all right? It's a much creamier, smoother consistency, and that's what you want. Yep, you want your, uh, you want your uh, mud to be wet on this coat because it helps, uh, it helps pull your tape, uh, it helps pull the mud into the tape. And actually, when you put wet mud on the joint, dry tape, and then wet mud on top of the dry tape, you're actually wetting the tape, and, it, and it'll all fuse itself together. That's okay. what we're looking to do here. So the wetter the better on this coat, plus it's easier to pull off. Uh, I'll show you about what I mean about pulling off. How do I use stiff mud? You'll get lumps in here. Uh, All right, so he's using a six inch knife to start this. And yeah. Tom, we should tell him you're in the tapered joint right now between the board. Yeah, yeah, this is where the two factories come together. All right. You only need uh, three nice. inches of mud. Yeah, he's got about, this is about a three inch wide sliver of mud here that he's yeah, putting on. Yeah, you can put it on, no matter how you put it on. But you want to put it down the center of the board. Yeah, right where that right joint is. Right down the joint. You want it to be about, stop right here about three right. inches wide. Now, once he gets it spread on there, he's going to get that paper tape we talked about earlier in the video. Um, and, you know, we got a 250-foot roll, but you might not need that I'm much. A 500-foot roll. So a 500-foot roll? Yeah. All right, we got a 500-foot roll of it. Yeah. All right, it's so kind of... the tape's about two inches, and he put about three inches of mud on there, so... Yeah. You cut a piece off, a manageable piece. Yeah, find the center of your joint, which it should be right where the two, the other center is. 
And I'm gonna hold that right in the center. And press it in with your I'm knife. Just gonna, yeah, just kind of set it in there. All right, so it's just, it's still dry on this side. He's yeah. just pressing it into the mud. Yeah. All right, and he's working there, in going. sections here. He didn't try to go the whole 20 foot wall. He he's got about half of it, maybe, maybe about you know nine foot piece of tape there. And now what he's gonna do is to kind of like the trick to it. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and wet the whole outside. I'm pressing wet mud into my wet mud below it and I'm pouring it off all at the same time. All right, so he's wetting the tape. Now, if you do not wet your tape, I promise you, you're gonna have bubbles forming behind your tape and it's gonna be a nightmare for you. So okay. what he just did there was he, he wet his joint three inches wide. He pressed dry paper tape into the joint compound. Then he went back across and wet that tape completely, covered it with compound. Then he pulled off every last bit of the mud. Yep, and like I said, I'm just I'm just applying, you know, slight pressure, but uh and that's done. And when you go back across this and pull in with your wet wet mud across this, you're basically pushing the mud out underneath of it. Yep. And Yep, I'm Create, not trying to creating fill this. Yep. Yeah, you want it to be solid filled, but you don't want to put too much on it. Yeah, I'm just saying, our finished product, it'll look like it'll start covering the tape. But you're not trying to do that on this on this coat. Not trying All to All we're it. doing is taping, uh, getting our, our joint set. Uh, this, this mud pan here I got is a nice, uh, you're going to need a mud pan, 6 inch, 4 inch, 5 inch knives, whatever. You'll have an assortment of knives. Uh, this mud pan uh, holds your mud, and it also, when I do these corners, the trick to putting this mud on is I'm not going like this, filling my knife and squishing it out. I'm missing the corner, I got too much overspread here. Alright, what I'm trying to do, the trick to using this mud knife, is scoop it off in just the corners. Here, I'll clean my knife off good. Scoop it off Let me see and just knife. use half your knife right. with the mud on it. And you see, he's just got it on the inside edge of the knife. Yep, yep. That's the that's the trick to using this. That's where you want the mud. Yep. You want it to be in the corner, not on the outside edge. Yep, and you can, uh, like I say, you can move your mud around in this pan really nice and easy, scooping it however. But uh, I'm just getting it on that one half of the corner. However, I'm doing, I'm filling this little corner joint up. Here we go, come up with the bottom. Got the garbage down here. I don't need any of this mud way out here. Yeah, because your tape's only two inches wide. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to do this side, I'm just reversing that. Reversing it. Putting the mud on the left inside corner. Yeah, well, or you can put it on side to side. Yeah, side to side. But you just want, basically, you just want mud. We're not spreading it. We're just having a nice mud base. Let me show him what you got there, Mike. Now, he's got enough mud on here right now to put his tape in in this corner. He's got about two inches of mud here and maybe about three inches of mud over here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. You need at least two inches, though. And he doesn't have six inches of mud coming all the way out to here. This is a very thin two-inch sliver, yeah. maybe two and a half inches of mud. That's what you're looking for in the corners before yeah, you put your tape fact, on. Yeah, and a matter of fact, uh, you don't even need two inches. An inch and a half out, out each side is plenty. So all this out here is leftover. Just, I can get it off right now. I can get it off after I tape. Uh, because you're going to take your same flat tape. I'm going to show you two tricks on this now. Take your fl same flat tape. Roll it out to length. It can be a little strong. All right, so I got my tape. Tape it to left. Trick number two: when you go into a corner, you're gonna it's pre-crease, so you're gonna fold your tape. Just fold it about three foot down for starters. 